one thing that isn't said enough. Some hadrosaurs were big. They didn't have horns, claws or armour, but most of the time they probably didn't need them anyway. That's a quote by paleoartist Julio Lacerda, and it couldn't be more true, especially when talking about the world's largest hadrosaur ever discovered. Nicknamed the untouchable hadrosaur, Shantungasaurus was a 15.5 metre long, 16 metric tonne hadrosaur of late Cretaceous China. At over double the weight of any other hadrosaurid species to date, its discovery in 1973 changed the way that we looked at hadrosaurs forever. But was Shantungasaurus truly untouchable? We often associate sauropods with being the only land animals ever capable of the untouchable status, aka being so large and powerful that you're literally invincible to any and all predators within your ecosystem. But people forget about hadrosaurs, the underrated duck-billed dinos whose family name literally means thick lizards. So why does no one talk about the fact that hadrosaurs thrived like hell during the Cretaceous period? By about 85 million years ago, we start seeing massive 12 metre plus hadrosaurs like Edmontosaurus and Magnapolia, just to name a couple. Meanwhile, a huge decrease in the sauropod fossil record demonstrates that the very same environment that suited hadrosaurs during this time caused sauropods to struggle. Enter the sauropod hiatus. From about 90 to 75 million years ago, sauropods seemingly disappear from the northern hemisphere, particularly North America, Europe and Asia, which I'm pretty sure is where China is from. This almost definitely has to do with a change in plant life going into the Cretaceous period. The Jurassic period supported sauropod growth massively, with large open areas and extremely tall trees. But going into the Cretaceous, we start seeing angiosperms, or flowering plants. These quickly become the dominant form of plant life, and earth becomes covered in dense forestation, which gives small to medium sized herbivores a chance to finally outcompete sauropods, and that is exactly what happened. Something about China, however, made this phenomenon even more noticeable. Although sauropods didn't go entirely extinct in China just yet, they only really exist through limited fossil evidence of smaller species like Wabesaurus and Jucheng Titan, for example. Meanwhile, evolution is busy spitting out the largest hadrosaur to ever exist, Shantungasaurus. Its full name, Shantungasaurus giganteus, meaning giant Shandong lizard, which refers to the Shandong Peninsula where its fossils were first discovered. But Shantungasaurus is so much more than just the largest largest hadrosaur. To call it big is a massive understatement. It outgrew even the largest of North American hadrosaur giants by several metres, but where it really shined was in its robust body structure. Shantungasaurus had evolved extremely muscular hind legs and a very stiff tail as to support its, let's say, curvaceous figure. At 16 metric tons, Shantungasaurus was almost double the weight of Magnapolia, who is often considered to be the second largest hadrosaurid, and its name means big pool. Shantungasaurus remains the largest non-sauropod land animal ever. It was likely the largest animal of its entire ecosystem, but it was also the largest biped ever discovered. That's right, Shantungasaurus was a facultative biped, which means mostly quadrupedal, but capable of a bipedal stance when required. This partially explains the relatively short forelimbs and high angled tail, and puts Shantungasaurus at a whopping height of 7 metres tall. For comparison, Shantungasaurus would have dwarf Tyrannosaurus rex standing at double its height. Being capable of a bipedal stance benefited Shantungasaurus in several ways. Primarily to reach higher foliage, which there wouldn't have been much competition over thanks to the lack of sauropods, but also to intimidate predators and, when necessary, to run at faster speeds. Speaking of, estimating the speed of Shantungasaurus is difficult because there really is nothing like it. The best we can do is compare it to its closely related American cousin, Edmontosaurus, who was also a facultative biped and was capable of speeds of up to 28 miles per hour. 
hadrosaurs were very fast dinosaurs. Given that Shantungosaurus was much more heavily built however, it's unlikely that it would have run any faster than 18 miles per hour, still a very respectable speed for an animal of that size, but keep in mind that that number is an estimation and not much research has gone into this at all. We've spoken about why Shantungosaurus got so big, but in order to answer the how Shantungosaurus got so big, we need look no further than the mouth. The most distinctive feature of Shantungosaurus was its strange array of 1,500 teeth. Being a hadrosaur, Shantungosaurus possessed a beak at the front of its jaws, used for picking at vegetation. But behind that beak sat incredibly powerful jaws lined with multiple rows of tiny, densely packed teeth called dental batteries. The teeth were sharp and serrated. They were built for shearing and chewing through even the toughest of plant matter and were continually replaced throughout the dinosaur's lifetime. Another clue comes from the facial joints, which were remarkably flexible. There's a couple explanations for this. Firstly, this allowed for superb freedom of movement, including the use of a shearing action for slicing through thick branches. It's also been theorised, however, that the facial joints evolved this way as to cushion the jaw against tough plant matter. Shantungosaurus also possessed large cheek pouches, kind of like a chipmunk. This likely aided in eating large amounts of food in one go. All of this points to one adaptation. Shantungosaurus was not a picky eater, and it couldn't really afford to be. An animal of this size would have required an ungodly amount of food to fuel its massive body, and so developing ways to digest tough plant matter and lots of it was necessary. So far, Shantungosaurus certainly seems like a beast worthy of the untouchable status. But to what degree? The late Cretaceous suited hadrosaurs, but also brought about some of the largest and most fearsome predators that Earth has ever seen. As for China alone, Shantungosaurus would have shared its habitat with some terrifying tyrannosaurid theropods, such as the 10 meter long Tarbosaurus or the slightly larger Jucheng Tyrannus. Unfortunately for them, Shantungosaurus towered over these predators and at least doubled them in weight. A healthy adult Shantungosaurus would have been an extremely intimidating choice of prey and almost never worth the effort. Predators are wired to know their limit and Shantungosaurus was enough hadrosaur to scare off any carnivore. But perhaps not. Not when you consider the evidence that Tyrannosaurus hunted in packs and, if hungry enough, could turn to very ambitious diets. So let's make this fair. Fossil evidence has shown that Shantungosaurus was an incredibly social dinosaur. Despite its size, Shantungosaurus lived much like any other hadrosaur of its time. Fossils have suggested that it both lived and travelled in herds and invested heavily into parental care for their offspring. Hadrosaurs generally are known to be very social animals with complex communication, such as the use of loud horn-like noises made through their head crest. I'm sure you've noticed by now, however, that Shantungosaurus lacked a head crest. This is because it belonged to the Saurolophinae subfamily, who generally don't have head crests. But luckily, Shantungosaurus achieved complex communication through another, more unique adaptation. The front of the skull houses a large opening by the nostrils. Researchers have concluded that it's probable that this once held a loose flap of skin capable of inflating in order to create a variety of unique sounds. All of this suggests that Shantungosaurus had the same levels of complex communication and social behaviour as any other hadrosaur. If one Shantungosaurus was enough to scare off even the largest of apex predators, then what would you call a herd of them?